Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents Why is it so hard to bring back extinct species? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Current Biology, published on April 11, 2022. Research conducted by Tom Gilbert, Christina lemkul Neuer, Qian Chin Lin, and others from the Center for Evolutionary Hologenomics at the University of Copenhagen in Denmark and the Guangdong Provincial Key Laboratory of Marine Biotechnology at Shantou University in China. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. De-extinction is the science of bringing back extinct species, but it's very challenging. Scientists are testing out lots of different ideas. One promising idea is to use genetic engineering to piece together the DNA of an extinct species. We analyzed old, fragmented DNA of the Christmas Island rat, which went extinct about 100 years ago. For an extinct species, the only option is to use the genome of a similar living species as a reference. By comparing DNA fragments to the reference, you can put the pieces in the right order. We used brown rats as a reference. Unfortunately, we found that some of the genes of the extinct species can't be recovered. This means that an animal brought back by genetic engineering wouldn't be an exact copy of the extinct species. Introduction. Imagine if you could visit a wildlife refuge and see a woolly mammoth or a dodo. De-extinction is the effort to bring back extinct species such as these. Many animals have gone extinct due to human activities, like overhunting or habitat destruction. An entire ecosystem can be damaged when just one species disappears. If we can bring an animal back from extinction, then it's possible that some of that ecosystem could be restored. Scientists are testing out lots of ways that de-extinction might be possible. One possible method is cloning. Cloning is when the DNA from one animal is placed into the egg cell of another animal. But this method only works if there are still intact cells from the extinct animal available. Scientists are trying this method with the Pyrenean ibex, which went extinct in January 2000. Another idea is backbreeding. The quagga is a subspecies of zebra that went extinct in the 1880s. Since it shares almost all of its DNA with modern zebras, it may be possible to selectively breed zebras until they look the same as the extinct quagga. Here is an artist's rendering of the quagga, Equus quagga, an animal related to horses and zebras, which went extinct in 1883. You can see zebra-like stripes along its head and neck. It's a brownish color along the back and hindquarters, with white legs. Another option is genetic engineering. Using techniques from ancient DNA, or ADNA, analysis, it may be possible to sequence the genome of extinct animals. Scientists could then use special tools to edit the DNA from a closely related reference species to match the DNA of the extinct species. This DNA would be placed inside the egg and sperm cells of the reference species. But how close would the new animal be to the extinct animal? That's what we wanted to find out. Methods our study focuses on the Christmas Island rat. We use the common brown rat as a reference species for DNA comparison. The brown rat and Christmas Island rat are closely related to each other. So this represents a best case scenario for genetic engineering. It also helps that brown rats are studied in labs a lot. We thus have well-tested methods for studying and editing their DNA. We extracted DNA from two preserved Christmas Island rats from a collection at the Oxford University Museum of Natural History. We used a small piece of the dried skin from each rat. The samples were collected between 1900 and 1902. DNA breaks apart as it gets old, so we expected the Christmas Island rat DNA to be in many small fragments. 
We used methods from A-DNA analysis to multiply the amount of DNA in each sample. We then read the tiny pieces of fragmented Christmas Island DNA and lined them up with the brown rat genome for reference. We also used the same methods with the genomes of other rat species. Other labs sequenced the genomes of those species and shared them with us. Here in figure one, you can see the last common ancestor of brown rats, Rattus norvegicus, and Christmas Island rats, Rattus mccleary, lived about 2.3 million years ago. For humans, that's a long time, but it's a short time when we are talking about evolution. For comparison, humans and chimpanzees' last common ancestor lived between 7 and 8 million years ago. In the graph, you can see time in millions of years before present on the x-axis. In the y dimension are the different rat species. Lines that are closer together mean that those species are more closely related. At the top, you can see Mus musculus, a house mouse, which shared a common ancestor with rats more than 10 million years ago. The rat species include from top to bottom, Rattus norvegicus, which is the common brown rat that you can see here, Rattus natidus, Rattus mccleary, or mccleary's rat, aka the Christmas Island rat, Rattus rattus, and Rattus tenzumi. Results. We were able to recover 95% of the Christmas Island rat genome, which sounds like a good amount, but we were surprised to find that the missing 5% of the genome wasn't random. We recovered the parts of the genome that give the Christmas Island rat its distinctive long black hair and long whiskers very well, yet there were some genes that we were unable to recover at all. Large parts of the genes related to the rat's sense of smell and immune system were missing. Then we looked at the genome data from three other rat species. We found that we ran into the same kind of problem with all of them. This tells us that the imperfect match is due to differences between species and not problems with the technology. Figure 2 represents the number of genes found at different coverage levels. Coverage level describes how well each gene was recovered. The closer the number is to 1, the better the reading. At coverage level 0, none of the DNA from a gene was able to be read and edited. The numbers in each region show the number of genes at each coverage level. For example, there were 6,705 genes that had perfect coverage, seen in dark purple. 25,834 genes had coverage between 0.9 and 1, seen in light purple. And 1,661 genes had coverage less than that, seen in orange. We found that there were 100 genes that had very low or no coverage. You can see these genes in the magnified orange area. 984 genes had coverage between 0.75 and 0.9. 442 genes had coverage between 0.5 and 0.75. 135 genes had coverage between 0.25 and 0.5 and 100 genes had coverage between 0 and 0 0.25. Looking at the graphic, the number of poorly recovered genes is small compared to the total number of genes. Why is it important to know that some genes aren't recovered well? Discussion. We wanted to know if we could recover enough of the genome to bring back Christmas Island rats. We were able to recover a lot, but the missing parts were important. We now know that for most extinct species, it will not be possible to bring back an exact replica via genetic engineering. They will always have some traits of the extinct species and some traits of the reference species. That doesn't mean that de-extinction projects are a scientific dead end, though. Many scientists hope that they can introduce a new species to fill a niche left by an extinct species. 
A healthy ecosystem needs a variety of species living together. Human actions have made it difficult for many animals to survive. Overhunting, cutting down forests, and draining marshes are harmful. Many species have become extinct, leaving important roles in habitats unfilled. So, the extinction may be able to introduce new species to take on these ecological roles. Conclusion It is exciting to see the different ways that de-extinction could happen. But one thing is very clear. It is much easier to keep a species from going extinct than it is to bring a species back. That's why it's so important to protect and conserve endangered species. Visit wildlife reserves in your corner of the world to learn more about the animals and habitats near you. By helping to care for the environment, you can help keep animals from going extinct. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.